Live from Market Square in downtown San Antonio, this is SA Live. Oh, it's a dino mite show today. <laughs> happy Fantastic Friday and happy first day of no, March. No, 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 no. <laughs> a lot a lot of teeth on today's show. <laughs> oh, good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorostiz. And I'm David Elder filling in for the incredible Mike Ostrahage. <laughs> And we have a really great show today. Oh, yes. It's going to be excited. a roaring good time. Oh, oh, oh I know. I Somebody know. stop us. Hey, it's a Friday because <laughs> Dinosaur George is here to stomp into the show. And we're talking dinosaurs that resemble dragons. This is so I out mean, of Game of Thrones right now. I know. <laughs> Just wait for the intro. There it is. Okay. What have you got? Well, you know, the legend of dragons, we can date back about 3,500 years ago in Asia. And the early Asians were looking at something that in their imagination, they came up with the idea of dragons. Well, I believe I brought a couple of dragons to show <laughs> you guys. This is Draco Rex Hogwartsia. <gasps> the name in English, <laughs> the Dragon King of Hogwarts. This yes, dinosaur was actually named after the Hogwarts uh, right. Harry Potter books. So this is Draco Rex. And you can understand, if you were to look at this and not know what a dragon is. That's a dragon, yeah. It's a dragon. Right. I yeah. mean, you clearly can understand, especially when you look at the profile of this guy, it looks so dragonish. Yeah. yeah. You can understand. So this is an example of where we think the idea of dragons could have come from. It's from people seeing bones of animals they didn't understand at the time. I mean, that's 3,500 right. years ago. Right. So, yeah, this is a dragon. It's a dinosaur. Yeah. But you can understand where dragons come from. And oh. Pete's dragon. That was another good one. That's exactly right. Another yeah. good one. Yeah. And Puff the Magic. And Puff the Magic Dragon. All these great dragons of lore that we could go on and on about. But I mean, this one looks like hyper dragon. Yeah, right? absolutely. I, no, but you have some other examples here. I mean, this one. So what is this one? Well, this is an animal called Estamenosuchus. This is an animal that predates the dinosaurs by 20 million years. Wow. But it's got these unusual horns on its head. And if you look at images of dragons, oftentimes uh -huh. you see them being very ornamented, having a lot of those things. Yeah. And so this animal looks terrifying, to tell you the truth. We probably wouldn't have had to worry about this. He's built more like, a, like an oversized pig. He's, he's built like a Toyota or like a, a Volkswagen Beetle. Okay. He's relatively short, very stocky. Those enormous teeth may look terrifying. He's probably more omnivorous. He, he would have eaten us if he had the chance. <laughs> yeah, and say. you know, if this were here now, I'd trip you and run. Yeah. <laughs> and get help because I care. She no is work. pregnant, I'm not, she I'm not going pregnant. anywhere fast. I would be the one to be eaten, you guys. You guys would get away. So yeah, its name is Estamenosuchus. It means crown crocodile in English. And this is an animal from Russia. But again, huh. that, that dragonish look. Yeah. Okay. Probably enjoys a nice glass of vodka too. Now, what about <laughs> this one here? Now, that this guy. Like, this is one I was having fun with earlier. You were. This one actually. Goes, rawr, rawr. Now, this guy's name is Minotaurosaurus, oh, named like after the. Minotaur. the absolutely, yeah. looks like the Minotaur. Yeah. And again, it could be an example of an animal that ancient culture saw and didn't understand, so they applied their best guesses to it. Yeah. And so it looks like the Minotaur. Now, that one comes from China, so the big nostrils with the idea of fire coming out of it probably came from things like that, those gigantically large Because you see nostrils. those yeah. every Chinese New Year. Absolutely. Yes. In fact, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because if you see <laughs> images of them dancing mm -hmm. in the street wearing yeah. that costume, that, that's what they're wearing. Really? It literally appears to be that animal. So again, I believe dragons are the imagination of people who didn't understand dinosaurs at the time. But when you look at these examples, I think it makes all the sense in the world that you'd come up with a dragon. The imagination is such a wonderful thing. Isn't oh, yes. It? You can come up with all kinds of stuff. Now, you got this big one right yes. here. Yes, and this is something that once lived in Texas. Absolutely. You want to talk about a, a dragon. You ready? This would be an example all right. of a dragon. Do it. This. This is wow. for real. <laughs> this, this is, is wild, right? This, this is, is amazing. Wild. It is. This is Dinosuchus, the largest alligator that ever lived in North America. Oh, my. And this is a <laughs> Texas resident. This thing lived out in what is now Big Bend, Texas. This is why I don't go to lakes right here. This Absolutely. Is this is, oh, this my is gosh. Why. You are yeah. talking about an alligator the size of a bus. Oh my God. So this is as close to a dragon as Texas got, uh, and we're fortunate it's not here anymore. But imagine an thing. alligator the size of a bus. That's, this, is a di this is an alligator that ate dinosaurs. This is one of the things I'm not, you know, where yeah, everything's is, bigger in Texas. That's okay. This is the one thing, like, if this was smaller yeah. in Texas, yeah. I'd be okay. This guy's eating, like, six Whataburgers. 
And he'd still be yeah. like able to eat a lot more. So you have a traveling dinosaur museum, Absolutely, right? yeah. I, I have a traveling dinosaur museum that's really designed to take a museum into communities where the kids may not get the chance to go. Um, there's a lot of kids in our state who just don't have the means. It's either geographically, they live so far away from the cities, or it's economic, they just can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So the idea of a traveling museum came to me, and through the help of so many wonderful people, I was able to put it together. Uh, the Goldsberry Foundation is the one that kicked it off for me, and because of their kindness, we were able to take off with it, and now we travel nonstop to elementary schools and communities all over the state. And Dinosaur George, Thank you so much for being out here. As you can see, if you want to get more information, there is the website right there. It's dinosaurgeorge.com. You can go slash contact us if you want to book him for your next event. You want him to go talk. You want him to be a speaker. You want him to bring all these really cool things out there. I mean, it's impressive. It's amazing. I love it so much. And, of course, for more information on Dinosaur George, you can also head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Well, March is here. Yes. Isn't that wild? It's already it's the here. the first of March. Oh, my gosh. And that means spring it. break is just right around the corner for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And if you plan on hitting the road, maybe with your best furry friends, here's a pup-tastic <laughs> checklist. Oh, I know. That I, will have you, that will help you pop hair. Paw, pear. You got this. Over there. Okay, for any adventure. <laughs> take a look, take a look. <laughs> gearing up for spring break and if you're taking a road trip yes you hear dogs barking maybe you're taking your furry friends along with your children a lot of people do that we are getting you all ready we have a checklist of what you should take when you hit the road with your furry friends i have adina anderson lifestyle expert in her fur babies and you've seen her on sa live but adina travel to the country I with do. her babies so you know what we need for our road trip for spring yes, break right i've done it for a couple years now and there's a lot of things you know tried and true of what I found out that I do need and don't need, starting with car seats and treats. Uh -huh. Gotta have treats, right girls? And who do we have here, Adina? This is Molly, is the little one here. Molly. And then Riley <laughs> is the bigger one. Oh, you are so precious. Okay, so we're here at Chrysler's Natural Pet and that's where you're gonna get everything today. So first we wanna start with the harness and I got Riley's harness here. And the reason I like a harness more than a collar is because they're excited a lot when you're traveling. Yes. And the collar gets a little choky on them. Yes. And this is the harness I got for Riley. This is the, the fuzz yard, but any of these harnesses are great. And then next you wanna worry about safety. My pups mm. are in car seats. If you get into a wreck, <laughs> it's adorable. Okay. They, will hold, they will protect them. You uh -huh. know, it latches onto their harness. And so they're protected. You're, and also when you stop, they're not running out of the car. Yes. Because they're latched in. So that's so they are thing. actually latched to the car seat. They are. Oh my goodness. Yes. And the car How seats are over here. This? Okay, <laughs> let's check out the car yeah, seats. Yeah, car seats are great. Um, this is the car. They come in all different sizes. Obviously, this has a little German Shepherd in it. These guys are tiny, so they have smaller car seats. These are good too, you know, to protect your back seat. Oh, yeah. This aisle is dedicated to CBD oil options, all based on your dog's weight. They even have a gravy that you can put on their food to help with the anxiety. Definitely ask your vet okay. on anything that you're gonna give them, yes. especially with CBD oils and different, okay. especially if they haven't had it yet before. Mm -hmm. Try it out before you go on a trip so you don't have any tummy problems. Okay, so speaking of tummy problems, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking no, of, yes. Be responsible. Be a responsible pet owner. If you're going to take your dog for a walk, which mm -hmm. you should when you're on a road trip, mm -hmm. stop every couple hours. You have to go to the bathroom. These little poopy bags are awesome. They connect right to their car Ooh, seat yes. or right to your purse. Yes. You know, clean up after your pet. Other items on the checklist? Dog toys. Of course, they have to have something to play with. <laughs> well, obviously, this is getting their attention. Yeah, yeah. And well, you never know what the weather may bring, so maybe a raincoat too. I want to mention that um, you don't get here, you have to go to the vet for this, but microchip your pet. You're on the road, you know, just this morning I found a dog in my neighborhood and thank God it had a tag. So get a tag for your dog. Both my girls have tags. It has their name on them. It has the little address. You can get those at any of the stores. Yes. Are you guys ready? <laughs> All right, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Guys. We'll see you later. All right, Come we're ready on, girls. to hit the road now with our furry friends. <laughs> So 
we've been on the road, but it's important to take a break, yes. right, Adina? Especially because these guys have been sleeping, so they need to get their energy out. Try to find a dog park. That's your other tip. So it is. Yeah. yeah. You know, Google where you're going to and find a local dog park that's on your route. You know, stopping at gas stations, things like that, they don't really get to stretch their legs enough. Right. And in here, you can unleash them, let them Safe. run. It's fenced in. Mm -hmm. I always have a little day pack that I take with. So cute. Um, these are great from Overland. And I have my little Chew Dog treats, which you can see they love. Adorable. And what's neat is that it comes with these little bowls to put Look their food and water. You can put their toys, their puppy pads. And another suggestion I always, always take with me is a first aid kit. Adina, you've been so helpful. All these tips, I mean, this bag alone has so many great things. So even if you just pack that, but we took you to the store, <laughs> we hit our checklist, and of course, more information is on your My blog. website, yeah, okay. creativelifestyles.tv. And I know you guys will have it on your website as well. Yes, all right. And don't forget to go there for those list of dog-friendly hotels as well, just in case you need to narrow it down. I've had so much fun with you girls, and I think we're going to let them play. And I hope you all have happy travels for spring break. Thank yes, you, Adina. Thank you so much. Back to you guys. All right, here is her website for the complete spring break checklist. Just go to creativelifestyles.tv for more on lifestyle expert Adina Anderson. I mean, this was some cool stuff on there, right? And we also, we want to see pictures of your animals, your furry friends, your fur babies, all right, going on a trip, on a vacation adventure. Mm -hmm. You got to send them over. Essay Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. And if you want to tag us in on Instagram as well, we'll go look at it as well. But we'll share it on here later. Send them all over. We want to see a little fur babies. Yes, having fun. All right, still ahead, a taste of some of the best cocktails in the city. We're shaking things up with Gustology. Plus, smoked Gouda, habanero ketchup, and more. It's a Caribbean jerk burger in celebration of Burger Week and where you can get these beefed up burgers. Stay with us. The Jerk Shack is a Caribbean-inspired restaurant serving up authentic and artisan Jamaican cuisine. It's delicious. I did a story on them last year. Fantastic. I just had a blast eating all the delicious yeah. food. <laughs> and chef and owner Nicola Black is here with us today to give us a taste of their special burger just in time for Burger Week. Thank you so much for being here. Thank and you. And here we got the patty going right here. Yep. Now, what kind of patty is that? So this is a Angus sirloin with the pork mixture, our house-made jerk seasoning. We put sauteed onions inside, and then we hand pack them. So there it's you go. full of lots of flavors. So and right into one. the pan. Oh, and you got the sizzle going. Mm -hmm. I like what's going on here. And you also brought some other food items with you out here today. Of course, yes. we're going to focus on the burger. But look at this. This is the fried jerk chicken yes. and waffles. So most people, <laughs> you know, uh, we were one of the first people to uh, fry jerk chicken. I know. I tell everybody about it. Let me tell you. I'm like, oh, no, you want to get some fried chicken, you go over to the jerk shack. That's and I so uh, we've, we've always paired it with our mac and cheese. And uh, I kind of wanted to do like a little spin on it. Yeah. So I came up with the pineapple spice waffle. Uh, we pair it with fried plantains, fried jalapenos. Yes. You put our sauces on the chicken uh -huh. and some syrup. But what we're known for with this dish is our rum creme anglaise. So it's a rum <laughs> sauce, and we know how you love sauces. I love so. sauce. You know I love sauces. <laughs> and you just pour right on top, don't yep. you? Yep. Go ahead. I'm, pour I'm, it as much as you like. All right. I'm just going to get wild. Oh, with yeah. Yeah. That's oh, it. Oh, my gosh. That's how they like it. <laughs> there we go. And you know what? Just to make it like a, like a lava flow. Oh, wow. Right? wow. That's how we do wow. it right there. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm just going gonna, gonna to sample some here. You might get a little drunk off that too. <laughs> it's like rum. That is delicious. Yeah. Well, so that looks fantastic. I'm gonna take a bite out of that after we're getting this burger ready. Yep. But now you got the burger going. Yep. You're gonna flip it here because yep. you got the gloves on and everything. Yep. You're ready to go. So. But I mean, what made you think of this idea for this burger? Like, what um, what difference is it from just an average? I burger? just uh, I wanted it to stay true to the jerk shack, so I wanted it to be spicy. Mm -hmm. But um, I saw everyone, you know, being a part of. San Antonio Burger Week, and I was Which like, is such a cool thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I want to be a part of it. I want to showcase something that's true to us. So we've got one here already made. That looks pretty. Uh, we've got uh, our buns are made from uh, Central Market every morning. Oh, They've cool. been great to us. Yeah. So we pick them up from Central Market. Um, our Angus sirloin uh, patty with yeah. the ground pork. And what do you and got on got, the side there? What do you got? Okay, so a lot of people say our, our burgers packs a lot of heat. Yeah. So we pair it with potato salad. Okay, I'm just going to reach over you here because I, I want to see what's going on with this thing because, let me see. 
Is there nothing that y'all can't? I, what can't you make? I don't make? know. It's all delicious. <laughs> it's so good. I love it. And you got this middle dish here. Yeah. This one looks very island inspired, right? It is. The plantain, it the is. shrimp, and the rice. So we wanted to do something. Um, I took some of the seafood dishes off of our menu, mm -hmm. but I still wanted to offer something seafood. So yeah. uh, we decided to do a coconut curry shrimp with onions, peppers, spices. It's still paired with our, you know, traditional rice and peas and cabbage, but uh, it's something, you know, for people who don't necessarily eat chicken or pork. If, <laughs> if I could eat this every moment of every day of my life, I would. Y'all just make delicious food. The Thank flavor you. is so intense. Thank you. It's, it's perfect. And it's a perfect balance of salt. You guys do such a great job. Awesome. I think this burger, we can start stacking this bad okay. boy up here. So and you got all your, uh, your sauces and yeah. everything. Yeah. Perfect. And so, what do you got there? Is that like a ketchup? It is. It's okay. spicy. You want to try it? Oh, yeah. All one. right. There you so go. This and you is start a... building it after I try this, okay? All right. There so that's oh, our on. scotch bonnet ketchup. <laughs> So it's still ketchupy, but yeah. it's spicy. So then it goes ketchup, mm -hmm. and you got the lettuce, yeah. and that's like a bib lettuce almost, right? That's like a it's butter lettuce. Butter lettuce. Yeah. Oh, hello. So we'll put our patty down. Patty on top. Yeah. Oh look, I love how this nose it just turned off and everything. It's so <laughs> smart. And then you go. They got the tomatoes. Yep, we got our tomatoes. Oh my gosh. Our butter lettuce. Right. And this is a pineapple. You got the pineapple. Pineapple. My and then gosh. we're gonna top it off with our Jake. Our jerk aioli. So you finish that off there. You guys, to get more information on the jerk shack, you guys also have a food truck. Just a lot of really cool stuff mm -hmm. going on with, with everything this year for you guys. Congratulations. You guys can get more information by heading over to salive.com, clicking on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm going to take a bite out of this, but in the meantime, you guys, <laughs> a little bit later in the show here, stay ahead. Of, we're going to have Fit and Feast. We're talking Army Day, and this moves you and that you can do for a total arm workout in your living room. Plus, an incredible experience in the heart of the Texas Hill Country, an outdoor retreat that you can relax and unwind. Stay with us. We'll be further. A new event is coming to the Texas Hill Country River Region at the end of March. It's called Women Who Wander, an outdoor retreat for women over 21 at any outdoor skill level. And Shannon Beasley with Women Who Wander is here to tell us a little bit more about it. And you've brought along some activities I with did. you. Very exciting. Yes, okay. So we have... Black Belt Academy of Uvalde, which is in Uvalde County, where the event's going to be hosted. And so they're going to demonstrate for us, if y'all will, some of what we're going to be doing. So it's really exciting, the uh, programs that y'all, we're going to be offering. And, and they're, the goal is to offer some opportunities to empower women to try out different things that maybe you wouldn't try in your normal everyday life in a really safe environment. We've got some great people and they're, they're short spurts so you can decide if this is something you're interested in. So we're gonna be doing everything from kayaking to fly fishing, uh, fire safety, firearm safety, and um, painting, which we had here, cooking. And so just a lot of a great events all outdoors all on the banks of the beautiful Frio River in Uvalde County. So we're excited to have people come see us. I love that, the self-defense. I mean, not only do you learn some self-defense, which is great, but it's a great stress reliever That's too. what I'm thinking too. I'm excited to try it. <laughs> okay, where is it being held and when? So this is the last weekend in March, and it is in Concan. So uh, everything will be based at Frio Country Resort and that's where you'll check in, but we've got lodging all throughout Concan. We've got great partners who have come on and want to help uh, participate, so they're providing discounts for lodging, so you can have everything from you know, tent camping to bring an RV, or you can have luxury homes. We've got everything in between, and so when you go to our website, www. Uh, one women who wander texas.com all the information's there and and we're excited we're the numbers are growing we're getting ready uh to be at that max so we're ready for everybody to jump on all right now everybody here looks fantastic i just want to say that but we've got one of the cutest ones i think right over here <laughs> over here we got rachel kellner texas game warden joins me and you guys have brought dexter with you tell me a little bit about Dexter. yes we do dexter here is a canine for our texas game warden k9 team we call him a texas game warden he is this is his handler and his partner chrissy thompson um, dexter is one of 11 canines here in the state of texas our canines range from search and rescue canines to wildlife canines to drug and resource canines the money that we're 
gathering from our Women Who Wonder retreat goes back to Texas Game Wardens. So we have a found, Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation and a little shoot off of that called Gear Up for Game Wardens. We are funded so, solely by hunting and fishing license sales. And so extras for us comes from Gear Up for Game Wardens. So an event like this is a huge plus for us to help us purchase dogs like Dexter, to help us purchase kayaks to patrol the Frio River that our event is taking on, to purchase body-worn cameras for officer safety issues, and stuff that is over and above normal what the legislature appropriates for a game warden salary. Okay, and Dexter, of course, search and rescue, right? Yes. That's what he, is that Dexter one of his? Dexter is a search and rescue dog. Dexter yes. <laughs> has shown, uh, shown fabulously throughout um, the junction floods. Um, we did 10,000 rescues in Hurricane Harvey, which K-9 dogs participated in as well. All right, and of course, there is a special deal for SA Live viewers there right are. now, right? Yes. You get a 15% discount on registration for the Women Who Wander Outdoor Retreat. All you have to do is just enter the code SA Live online at womenwhowandertexas.com. And if you can't make it to the retreat, visit Uvalde County anyway. They have all kinds of attractions from the Frio Bat Cave to outdoor adventures on the rivers. You can plan your trip online at visit uvaldecounty.com. We see you soon. Coming up on SA Live, a taste of some of the best in the city. A really cool event with unlimited samples. We're giving you a taste of what you can expect. Plus, we asked you earlier to share your pet vacation photos. Here it is from Cindy. Birdie and Cappy getting ready for a ride. Keep them coming at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. And if we want to wish a very happy 65th wedding anniversary to a couple of folks in our audience, Eddie and Rose Marie Limon. Congratulations. From the best eats to the best shops in town, it's an event all about the best of the city, hosted by San Antonio Magazine. And here to give you a taste is Marco Guillero, owner of Gustology. Welcome. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great, and you brought some, some cocktails with you here, right? Yeah, so the reason we're here is uh, we're involved with Best of the City, so we help on the alcohol side. So we've partnered with them, and uh, some of the uh, beverages that you'll see there is you know, uh, Southerly Beer, and then we're gonna have Rebecca Creek, uh, the winner was actually Dorchel, um, oh, okay, and cool. then obviously lots of food options, Mitera, uh, Smoke Shack, Pinch, and obviously a lot more. Which Mitera, that's our, that's our neighbors right over here. We love to go over there and eat at all the different restaurants. Now, what are you going to be making today? I see you got some different setups, but what exact cocktails are you making? Well, so you're going to be making the cocktail, so that's what Gustology does. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is we, uh, we go into uh, people's homes, corporate events, and we teach them how to make cocktails for fun. Uh -huh. So to build this one, we're going to do a Moscow Mule. Moscow Mule, let's um, do it. So we're using uh, Enchanted Rock Vodka. Okay. Um, first, we want to fill this with ice. Okay, perfect. And you already got your little bucket of ice right here. There you go. You, put it, you need to put it into a shaker, right? This is a shaker. Shaker, yeah. Okay, shaker, perfect. that's your mixing cup. Okay. And then you want to take your vodka, which that's called the jigger. You okay. want to pour it into the ice there. All right. And then we're going to squeeze that lime. So you want to put it in. Oh, oh look there at that. That's I was going to say it. Perfect. Just squeeze it right in there. Cover your eyes. There you go. Oh, nice. Oh, my gosh. I need to get one of these. <laughs> that's, so, that's so much easier than just using your hands. All right. So the lime's in there. And then you cover and shake it? Yep. Cover it. And then you're going to shake it. All right. This is when you. Hey, what else you want on the menu? We got lots of stuff over here. This is when you're shaking at the restaurant. Yeah, right? so yeah, so there's going to be lots of samples at Best of the City, um, and so you know, obviously, uh, we're going to be having Enchanted Rock. So they they could be serving up Moscow meals there. Uh huh. Right. And then really we're going to take the uh, Fever Tree Ginger Beer, okay. and then you're going to top it off. Fantastic, and that's what we got right here. Put yes. That right there, and the ginger beer is what sells it, right? There yes. A little more ice, yes. and then that ginger beer. Though sometimes I'll just pop open a ginger beer and just add a little bit of something, something to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's that ginger beer, though. Ginger beer is great for uh, if you're nauseous as well. Uh, oh. It cleans a palate, and then, and then you, you can kind of flip this around as oh, a garnish. Look at you. Now it looks like a sea creature floating around in my drink. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to take that. I mean, <coughs> it's delicious. That ginger beer will get you, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, spicy. <laughs> That'll get you. All right, next drink you got right here. This is a classic drink, right? The Old Fashioned. It's the actually fashioned. coined as the first cocktail to ever be invented. Uh, cocktail, the word defines to bitters, 
uh, sugar and liquor. Uh, we're using uh, a whiskey from Rebecca Creek. Cool, so what do we do? How do we get this going? So we're gonna put some ice in this glass. So this okay. drink is very straightforward. And this is actually, this is a pretty common one for people looking to get a little fancy at the bar, right? This is yeah. like a standard fancy drink. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, so you got your Rebecca Creek, you're gonna just pour it in there. There we go. You have your uh, bitters. Any uh, particular kind of bitters? Which one? We're is using this? an orange bitters, okay. uh, but you can use uh, some of the popular Angostura, Peychaud's. You can use flavored bitters. Wait, how many? How many dashes of bitters? Three dashes is three good. Three dashes. One, two, three. There we go. I'm gonna put a little extra in there. There you go. There we go. And then you got your simple syrup, okay. which is the sugar component of it. Boom. There we go. And then you're gonna stir it with the spoon. Stir it up, little darling. Sometimes I just break out in song. You never know when it's gonna happen, right? Right on. So we stir it. <laughs> You're a good sport. I appreciate it. Here we go. Like, right. You have and a good we, voice. Oh, they, oh, this guy. Okay. And then what else? So we got these uh, peels right here. Uh, uh, so the big thing about garnishes, what a lot of people don't realize, is actually for the aromatic, the smell. Yeah. Uh, so you can either squeeze that in there, or also you get the uh, rind of an orange, and mm -hmm. so you squeeze it long ways to get the oils in. And as you're sipping your drink, uh, you're wanting to smell, and yeah. it actually ties the drink together. Oh, yeah. It just smells like a little a basket of, of smells and things like that. Looks like, yeah. It smells like. Deliciousness. And it tastes great. It's very spicy. Mark, thank you so much. And of course, you guys, the best of the city, the event is happening now. The website is up there on the screen, and you can see it right there. I mean, you just head over there. It's on Eventbrite, and you can go get your tickets now. It's a great event. Go get a taste of everything that we have here in the city. It's the best of the city. Just get the little bites of everything and enjoy yourself. It's March 7th, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the San Antonio Zoo. And for more information, of course, you can head to our website, salive.com, so you can get a link to buy some tickets. All right. Next on SA Live. A breakfast recipe packed with flavor. And get this, it takes less than 20 minutes to make. That and more when SA Live returns. Stay with us. Well, fit and feast, and that's today's fitness topic. And joining me today is your sassy chef, Heather Larrikin, to tell you more. Thanks so much for being here. This looks incredibly good, okay? Thanks. So we're talking fitness, we're talking feasting, yep. and this is the feasting portion. Yes. This is a kind of keto yeah, breakfast recipe? Yeah, it's like a low-carb, like, breakfast eggs Florentine thing. Okay. Ooh, it looks so, good. <laughs> so um, I love to get extra veggies when I eat. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to do that is just to put them all in. Mm -hmm. So um, I love roasted peppers. And what I did was just crack the egg inside the pepper and baked it. Mm -hmm. um, I did bake the egg, or I'm sorry, I baked the pepper prior to the egg so then it'll turn out nice and soft. So when you bite into it, it's just caramelized and delicious. So, Ooh. And then when you roast vegetables, the sugars rise to the surface, so then it brings out the natural sweetness of the veggies. So, so. therefore you don't need a whole yeah. lot of extra. No. And what's, what's on it? Okay, so all it is is roasted onion, mm -hmm. salt and pepper, mm -hmm. and olive oil, and that's it. That's it. So while that was cooking, I sauteed up some spinach with garlic and onion, done and finished. If you want, you can add some avocado to the top, and it's super delicious. You can make it ahead of time, you can make it the night before, you can make it on your meal prep, Really good stuff. Really good stuff. All right. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that, we have some workout moves to go yes. along with this healthy uh -huh. recipe. And who do we have here? Okay, we have my son, my 14-year-old son. <laughs> <laughs> and he will be demonstrating some upper body moves. We're just going to do a compound movement with a bicep curl and a shoulder press. So he is standing with his feet hip width apart. His belly button is drawn in nice and tight. And he is curling and pressing. Brings it all the way up to the top. Squeeze, extends, and brings it down. Wants to make sure that he's bringing his shoulders down and back and keeping the core nice and tight. Always those two factors of the exercise are very, very important. And this is great to just kind of get teens moving, yes. right? Yes, yeah. And you know, it's hard sometimes when you're working out with your teen, especially they possibly don't want to work out with you. So, I mean, if you can get them to a gym setting, so it's not just like you and your child hanging out, <laughs> then that would be ideal. Or even working out at home, we work out in the garage a lot. So we also have another move that we can do. So this is upper body, and then if he wanted to go into core, this will work a little bit of the shoulder, so he can set his dumbbells down, and he can go into a plank position, wrists right below the shoulder is really important, and again, squeezing the shoulder blades together, keeping the core drawn in nice and tight, squeezing your glutes. Um, for a modified version, you can have wider feet to give you a wider stance and if you want a little more of a challenge you can do some shoulder taps just tap side to side you don't want a whole lot of rocking going on the hips and you don't want to ro 
rotate that hip out. You wanna make sure that your hips are square and facing the floor, driving the belly button in. This works your core, a little bit of the shoulder. And there you have it. So that's where it is, hip to be square. Yes, hip to be square. <laughs> that, exactly. <laughs> okay, now you go by your sassy chef. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so it is a everything. We do catering, we do meal prep, we do in-home cooking classes, and I have a free recipe blog on the website itself. So you just have to go to yoursassychef.com. I recently came out with a meal prep cookbook that's available on iTunes and Amazon. It's called How to Slay the Meal Prep Game. It comes with interchangeable recipes recipes, uh, grocery lists, shopping lists, pantry lists, everything in one book. It makes your meal prep process super simple. Oh my gosh, yeah. great stuff from Heather Larrigan from Your Sassy Chef. For more information on this recipe, on her and this workout, just head to our website, essaylive.com and click on the As Seen on Essay Live tab. Still ahead, we're going sci-fi, a free family event that you can gaze at the stars. That and more with a look at some of the coolest events happening this weekend. Welcome back to SA Live. It's Friday and we are ready for the weekend. Here's a look at some really cool, fun and free events happening. Join the San Antonio River Authority and the San Antonio League of Sidewalk Astronomers for an evening of sci-fi fun. This will even feature oversized illuminated, illuminated planets, a virtual reality experience, glow-in-the-dark activity and giveaways, a nine-foot laser robot show, <laughs> sci-fi characters, food trucks, and the largest viewing telescope in South Texas. Right. The event is tomorrow from 6 to 9 p.m. at John William Helton San Antonio River Nature Park. And Frog's Legs. Love Among the Lily Pads is a theater performance that is happening now until March 23rd at the Greg Barrios Theater at the Overtime. Tickets range from $10 to $15, and the show shares the travels of a very special frog named Tad. Oh, that's cute. Across a magical frog-filled landscape as he is forced to learn resilience in the face of adversity and the inevitable disappointment everyone experiences when looking for love. Tad's epic journey is littered with musicals and more, perfect for family-friendly outing. Well, if you're looking for a perfect date night, a Meadow Neighborhood Eatery is hosting their first pig roast Ooh. on their patio. <laughs> I love, yeah. baby. You go get some pig. They will have fun games for all, door prizes, live music, and a contest to win prizes. Adult tickets are 30 bucks, and it is free for children 10 and under. They will have a wine booth. Oh, yeah. Southside Craft Soda, <laughs> Alamo Beer Company, and plenty of specials on other beverages. The event is March 3rd from 4 to 7 p.m. Just head to their Facebook page, Meadow San Antonio, for ticket information. Go get you some pig. All right, First Friday is happening all around the downtown area. There's also a special First Friday hub market happening in Southtown from six until midnight tonight. It is a free event, so why not? I mean, you gotta go. Live DJs, cold craft beer and wines, and a handmade market and food. All that, it just, what a great way to kick off the weekend, right? Oh yeah, Start off so much First going Friday. On, now, know? speaking of new things mm -hmm. going on too, Elder Eats, right? Elder Eats. It's, it's happening. Where, oh, it's where you highlight all that great food yeah. all over town. That's right. And now it's, it's a 30-minute spot here on SA Live every Thursday at 1.30. And it has been such a journey already getting this whole thing together. It's a lot. It's a labor of love. But it's, it's, it's really exciting. I do have one thing that people keep asking me. What do they ask? They always ask me, do you really like everything you eat? Because every time I take a bite of something, I'm always like, mm, ah, and, and you know what the, their answer is? I don't, but what I show you on TV, I love everything that I put on TV. The things I don't, I just don't put on TV. Right, you don't put that's them on the TV. answer. I just don't put them on TV. <laughs> but there's so much good food all over San Antonio all over and the beyond. Place. Yeah, I and mean, it's exciting because we're going to be traveling uh, eventually all the way down to Houston, Galveston, Port A, Austin. I mean, so it's just really going to reach out. But of course, we're still going to make San Antonio the prime focus because believe me, there are enough places here in San Antonio to fill like five thousand years of television it's so many good places because every week on thursday you highlight how many i highlight four restaurants every thursday go. at 1 30 right here on sa live you can check them out and of course you can go to eldereats.com and you can follow me on social media at elder eats and you can check it out on there as well all right there yeah. you go all right coming up monday on sa live it's never too early to start planning for fiesta we're sharing a fiesta gift guide to help you prepare for the biggest celebration in town and spring is here. A look at the 2019 color of the year, how to wear it and more. That's all Monday at 1. Is that the color? All right, earlier we asked you to share pictures 
of you and your fur babies on road trips or vacations. Jessica says, here is my Rocky asleep on our road trip. How Aww. can it be asleep while it's supposed to be driving? I don't get it. <laughs> All right. Oh, Robert. What's up, Robert? It says, Lily wondering, are we there yet? Are we there yet? That's are a good dog. There? My dog's usually Look like eating this setup. seat. Look at that setup, though, in the backseat. Oh, watch out. Adina. Oh, 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 yeah, go back to it. Yeah, yeah, we go back to the windblown ones. <laughs> <laughs> there they are from Adina Anderson. Here is Molly and Riley on the road. They're yeah. having a wild time. This looks like the meme where, like, you actually have it where, like, like you're Thelma not a morning person. It's like, like you're a morning Louise. person and somebody's not. That's what it looks like. <laughs> All right. And uh, Cheryl Joe said, Molly, Riley, my Westie. And that's a little Westie on there. Look at it. It's a head. It looks mad. <laughs> oh, somebody's by the water. This is from Erica Zapata. Willow and Astro were fishing with us. Aww. Aww. They got, a, imagine a them getting in the water. <laughs> All right, Monday. We have It's Never Too Early to Start Planning for a Fiesta, and we're sharing a Fiesta gift guide to help you prepare for the biggest celebration in town. And spring is here. We're going to tell you the color of the year from Pantone, how to wear it, and more. That's all from Elsa Fernandez at Eye Candy Boutique. And that is all Monday at 1. I want to work for Pantone. They get to pick the color of the year. Yeah, they do. And it's like a it's actual like panel of people that assemble uh-huh. them. They're like, they're like superheroes. It's like Captain you America know, fashion. you got to know that color in order to be in, in yeah, the Yeah, you got to be in the know. Mm-hmm. You know what and else I found was uh, is fashionable this what? year? What? Uh, Bell-bottom jeans again are hot. No, no, don't do it. But Monday, weather's going to be chilly, so we're going to have chili on the show. Get it? (laughs) Your puns, you're on point today with the puns. Hey, chili willies.